Um, yeah, it's great to be here and listen to hear a lot of connections actually with our research project um, across the board. So I just wanted to point out the slide because I'll move on quickly from the title slide. This is a painting by Louis Le Brocchi of Ferdinand Levy, who's one of the poets that we're we're basically going to, to, to resurrect as a case study who's vanished from literary posterity. He was a Jamaican medical student at Trinity in the 1930s and 40s, and he published a book of poems here that are absolutely fascinating in, in their content and also just their, their poetic energy. Um, so I'll talk about him in a little minute. Uh, but um, Bran is a uh, HEA North South Research Funded uh, with Dr Gail McConnell, who's a poet and academic at Queen's University Belfast. And we have a postdoc who's incoming in January, who's just accepted the post, which is quite exciting. So basically, we're, we're trying to provide a new paradigm for Irish poetry. Nationalism as a kind of generative, rich, and inextricable part of the landscape of Irish literature in the 20th century is pretty well known. Regionalism, I suspect maybe less so, but regionalism associated with a poet who preceded that great 1960s generation of, of Northern poets um, James Heaney and so on. John Hewitt was, was a regionalist who developed a kind of literary construct uh, which, which uh, effectively suggested that to be rooted in, in locality or region was, was a, way, a, a way out of some of the binds uh, between, you know, kind of um, London-centric or metropolitan um, literary affinities or indeed nationalism. And we kind of want to uh, go beyond both categories. We'll be talking around them, I'm sure, uh, but we want to, to explore sort of forgotten voices and collaborations, particularly North-South collaborations. Someone like Robert Greeson, a young, disaffected, left-wing uh, man from East Belfast who came down to, and settled in Dublin and made his connections with a left-wing literary figure, Valentine Armonger, who was equally disaffected in the South. These kind of generative uh, cross-border collaborations. So some of the outputs will be scholarly articles. We want to produce an anthology of poets that have been forgotten and, and um, overlooked in the period. Audio installations with poetry jukebox, which you might have seen or come across in person, and then a digital exhibition. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about one of the figures that we're looking at, which is Ferdinand Levy. Uh, this is a picture of Paul Robeson and his visit to Dublin in 1935. Um, he came and he was actually booed and catcalled by the, the uh, black students who were part of a, a group called the Students of African uh, Association of Students of African Descent in Trinity because they, they felt that um, his kind of portrayals on stage were um, insensitive and so on. But he later was invited to Ferdinand Levy's house and they, they realized that they both had kind of similar anti-colonial, anti-imperial uh, affinities. So as I said, Levy was the first uh, black poet, as, we, as far as we know, published in Ireland. Uh, he'd lived in New York and been involved in the Harlem Renaissance there. Um, he was an active member of Dublin's Intellectual and Literary Society, founded the Gramophone Society. Uh, he had a fantastic art collection and he was president of the Association of Students of African Descent, organised talks on racial justice, and he petitioned de Valera during the Abyssinia crisis to, to uh, mount sanctions against Italy. Um, so I'll just show you a poem by Levy from the book. This has been excerpted a little, it's not the full poem, uh, the ellipses show where, where I've cut it and put in a little bit more. He talks about encountering a woman on O'Connell Street, and it's written in the rhythms of the Harlem Renaissance, all dressed in green from head to feet, Lord Lord, down O'Connell Street. The smile she smiled was indiscreet, Lord, Lord, down O'Connell Street. And it, fi it finishes then with this stanza, I'd make her know the tropic love of street. Lord, no, not down O'Connell Street. And it gives you a sense of some of the kind of fantastically rich and I think, you know, uh, unprecedented poetry uh, in that collection. And he wasn't the only poet that was visiting that we know of. I mean, there was a Chinese communist poet, Shelley Wang, who was here in the, the 1930s that w went both north and south and developed these kind of leftist connections. Um, George Reavy, who was a poet whose father was a linen merchant in Belfast who was born in Russia and ended up fleeing Russia during the revolution and coming to Ireland back to his Belfast roots in the 1920s into another kind of zone of conflict. Uh, poets who were stationed here uh, in the north during the Second World War and so on. 
Um, and just to finish then with, with kind of some of the tensions, I suppose, that we want to draw out are different ways of looking at, at Ireland at this period. This is from a letter to one of Levy's friends, a Harlem musician, uh, Leviticus Lyon, who um, he, he corresponded with and these really fascinating letters from the period. And you can see there the anti-imperial, um, anti-imperialism of Levy, but also a sense of kind of distance from nationalism and, and aspects of racism that are well documented in both the poems and the letters. I find the Irish race just waking up gradually, coming to realise that they are free from the harsh master's yoke. They are now running rampant with nationalism. Ireland for the Irish, by Irish goods, our Irish spirit, and a lot of other such strife. Um, so there's a kind of interesting tensions there uh, and a way of looking at uh, the poetry of the period that we're, we're going to try and recover. Thanks very much.